Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 9 of my old world tutorial series. This is basically a series where I just go through and play through the tutorial. As I've said before, I do have a more sandbox let's play style uh, beginner's guide going on at the same time playing as Rome uh, where you can watch me sort of play more freestyle rather than doing the tutorial. In terms of this tutorial, all we've got to do as far as I'm aware is defeat the Roman army which is over here. So we're following the ambitions that we need to do. We do need to finish training a hoplite. We need to build another barracks. The barracks is one turn away from completion. Uh, the hoplite is uh, two turns away from completion. So we'll soon be done there. And we're now known as Alexander the Strong. You've completed the ambition to build two uh, more barracks. Gives us some more legitimacy. New barracks. Your hardy workers have completed two more barracks. This will increase the amount of training generated each year. Cities with barracks will train units more quickly. You may now move melee units onto the barracks, allowing them to earn experience each year. Leave them there long enough and they even may, may level up and receive a free promotion. That's a point. Specifically says melee units, and I've got this unit on a barracks, but this is not a melee unit. This is a ranged unit, so I don't really need to have you on the barracks, but it is what it is. Um, I, I mean, I might promote you again. I could definitely afford it. I can give you swift plus one extra movement. Sure, sounds like good, a good idea. Probably won't give them another one, though. But you are definitely a melee unit, so that's fine. We can start promoting you. Now, they have infantry units and they have melee units. But they do have more melee units. So let's go down fierce for you. Uh, what else do we have going on? Oh, we've got our chariot. That was quick. Now, that's neither a melee unit or a... Uh, is it a ranged unit? I did not even check. What kind of unit is it? guess we will find out with this one. I'm um, going to start moving some of these units just sort of to the south so we're a little bit uh, little bit better defended uh, and I'll put you onto sentry because I don't think there's an awful lot that we need to do with you right now. Uh, I can bring this scout home. Let's go and do things like grab the horses along the way. Stick him back in the trees. I don't think it matters anymore but let's just do it anyway because it would be uh, unfortunate to lose out now if that, if that is the case. So the chariot's completed. We could do something else here. Uh, get a rancher and give us some extra science. But I think as we're just going for the... You know, in this particular scenario, we're just going for completing the mission that we're given. So we probably want to... Let's get another slinger, actually. I think we are a little bit short of ranged units. Uh, what are we building at the other city? You're, you're building a... Oh, I was already building a chariot there. I'm with you. Okay, that's fine. Um, what have we got here? This worker is now done. We could build a hamlet, it's suggesting. That would give us another 20 gold per turn. That's not a bad idea. And they give us 20 gold rather than 10 gold because they're next to the... Um, next to the Shrine of Zeus. So get plus 10 from out from Hamlet. Oh, plus 10 from trade networks. So if we hold down B, we can see which of our cities are connected via the rivers and via the open sea. So all three of our cities are actually connected by... Ro There's roads there, actually. So all three of our cities are connected by roads. So it gains extra from that. Yeah, only the urban tiles as well. get So urban tiles, any tiles connected by a road, any tiles connected by a river, and any tiles connected by sea. So these tiles up here, they're not connected via a road or river. These ones are connected up because they're urban, and then, these, and then they're connected up via the road. So by putting a hamlet here, we get 20 gold per turn instead of 10 gold per turn. I'm all right with that. Let's go and work on that. We'll, we'll take on that suggestion. Uh, you have now finished the barracks. Suggesting a garrison there. We could build a mine. We're not really short of anything. Um, I don't know if we can build lumber mills yet. Although we don't have any trees directly within our borders right now. We could get another farm. We could build another theatre. Looks like we've got plenty of quarries going. No, we've got plenty of mines going. Build a mine up there. 
Is there anything specifically that we need? I mean, we could also... Uh, let's go and get the farm. I don't know why that one's being particularly recommended as a plus 9. This one here would be a 10.5. Although, I guess you are blocking the growth of urban tiles by building farms directly next to your city. But that would be a better... It would be a better output tile. You can always change them and replace them with something else later on anyway, so... It's easier to do that in Old World than it is in Civilization, particularly Civilization 6, because it costs your uh, builders a charge to build the original building, and then a charge to remove a building, and then another charge to build the replacement building. So you essentially exhaust a builder by building a building and then changing it again, whereas because workers in Old World have infinite uses, you can change them around. Uh, Greek hoplite. People come from all around the lo uh, all around to line the streets and cheer the, the first Greek hoplite marches out the city gates. Each nation has two unique units. Yeah, we know about this one. Uh, Rome has the legionary. I'm not sure if we're going to see any of those. We've completed the ambition to enact fourth law, build a stronghold, and train a hoplite. It's another ten legitimacy. The Greek army has arrived from the south. You have been given a large amount of training. Prepare the army. Promote your units and assign generals to some. When you are ready, move at least seven units of your army to the highlighted staging area on the map. Okay, so we've got to move over here. Okay, that's fine. Oh, wow, that is a heck of an army there. Um, yeah, I think we're probably going to win this. So I'm going to move units up here towards the front. I'm not going to move into the staging area yet. I would like some time to prepare, and also we'll use up pretty much all of our orders if I try and move everyone in there on this turn. Um, I think combat is a good all-round one to go. I've just received an achievement called Noble. Uh, let's get a few more units over here. So, yeah, com combat one, I think, is a good all-rounder. Uh, we got a hot lot of hoplites. Uh, we can add a general to some. Are you already... Oh, you'll leave council as a chancellor. You're not doing anything now. So we'll put you in there. Yeah, we don't need generals on all of them. But we will at least try and promote them all. Uh, you only have the option of guard, not combat. Which means you'll take less damage. But I'm alright with that. Can promote you. Uh, let's give you fierce. We've got a lot of a lot of archer units as well, which are a lot better than slingers, to be honest. Um, but I've got this slinger, so we'll move up there. And that's it. You see, we've we've used all of our um, we've used all of our orders. We could go and buy some more. But this is what I've said uh, on, on another video somewhere, is that it's uh, it's actually my eight, my eight differences video. It's all about quality, not quantity. Because even if you've got a massive army like this, you cannot afford to move them all. You just do not have the orders to do so. So it's going to be asking me about a lot of next units. I'm just going to ignore them for now. I'm going to go back over here. Uh, something... We could build a treasury, actually. It'll take four years. Let's go and build a treasury. Get some extra money coming in. It's good for us. So we can now just uh, end the year. So what I was going to say is that um, if you have units left and you and you just want to skip through them, you can just press the space bar and it will automatically just skip the turn for them. Um, shift and space will sleep them. Control and space will put them into sentry mode. So you can just flick through them that way. Also, these buttons here, um, these are all linked to the number keys. So one, two, three, four, five. So like... Hitting three will cycle through um, your military units. Hitting two will cycle through your workers. Four will cycle through your scouts and so on. And you've also got the undo button here. You can actually go and undo moves that you've made. But let's go and hit end the year. So we've got lots of units. I still think we'd like to spend some time promoting some of these units. Particularly some of the ones that have got the, uh, the generals in them. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll move some units up. I'm not necessarily certain that our um, onagers are going to be all that much use. But I'm going to move up with some of these units right here. 
I'm not going to promote them all because it seems like a bit of a waste. But we can certainly go ahead and get a few more promotions in here. Give the uh, horses a bit of protection against ranged units. That's not too bad. Uh, steadfast is no use because we're not going up against tribal units here. We can promote you, give you combat one. We can promote you and give you fierce. So yeah, just burning through some of my training to give promotions to some of these units. Focus give you straight up extra damage. I think you guys are probably all done now. That's... Okay, let's just move you up just because we can. Use that last order. Right, okay. Turn has ended. Uh, our brother still feels fear as does any sane man, but never let it stop him. He's gained plus one courage. Okay. Um, got a free worker now. Guess I could go and build another farm here. Kind of wasting uh, orders at the moment, but I think it's time for us to move in. So I'm going to start by selecting these hoplites. And we'll have some of the hoplites, we'll have some of the chariots. I'm going to have this slinger at the back because it's got my good commander in it and we can make units do extra stuff. Uh, I think that is one of the staging area tiles and you can stand on top of the uh, worker. So let's go ahead and do that. Put the archers at the back. Uh, we do still have some orders left. Got one order left, but I can move you a bit close to the line. There we go. Most of the army's up here already. This hoplite that I trained didn't even get a chance to, to move in. Um, but that's fine. Let's end the year. So this should now trigger the next part of the event. Let's not worry too much about that. Your army is now ready to attack Rome. You are now known as Alexander the Glorious. You have completed the ambition. Deploy the Greek army to the highlighted area. It is now time to avenge your father. Declare war on Rome and invade their lands with your army. Your objective is to capture a Roman city. You have some onagers, which are siege units. Siege units are fantastic at beating down a city's defences, or battering down a city's defences. To use an onager, move it within attacking range of the city. You can hover the cursor over a unit to see its attack range outlined in red. Some siege units, like the Onager, require them to be uh, unlimbered before firing, which can be done by clicking the unlimber on the unit's action menu. It takes one turn for a ranged siege unit, siege unit to unlimber. So basically, it's a setup turn, after which point it will be ready to attack. A few archer units are included in your army. Archers are good at damaging enemy units from afar or battering down a city's defences. Most ranged units may move and fire in the same turn. Mounted units, including the horsemen units in your army, have the ability called Rout. After killing an enemy, a unit with route will advance into the tile and may make another attack on an adjacent unit. It is possible to create route chains where a unit will route a number of enemy units in a row. That's really nice. Mounted units are great at cleaning up the battlefield after your ranged units have damaged an advancing enemy army. Use your onagers and archers to batter down city's defences. When the city's defences are nearly gone, bring in your hoplites to finish off the city. Keep your horsemen units close by to pounce on any approaching enemies. Cool. Would have been. I mean, I know it gave me onagers, so it may, maybe should have been obvious. But it would have been nice if it had have actually said to me that my goal here was to take a city, not just to beat the army. But hey ho, it is what it is. Can't get all the way over there with that onager, and it only gave us two. Um, but we'll move in with some of these units. I don't have to declare war on them this turn, though. That is something that is worth remembering. I mean, it, it's it's expecting me to, but I don't actually have to do that. Um, and I, I don't think it matters which city I take either. Where is my scout? Can we get a little bit closer and actually see where one of the cities is? I think that's about as close as we're going to get, actually. So we'll just leave the scout over there. Okay, we've got a demand here. Um, our treasury is filled with the finest luxuries. The um, Sipsalid family has come to demand a cut of the wealth. They desire more of our collected dyes, or they will make our job of governing difficult. Uh, we can give them the dies, or they can lose opinion. Sure, I'll give them the dies. I'm not doing much with them now. On a still night, the moon moves into the shadow of the earth. The only light reaching its surface glows an ominous bloody red. Our soldiers believe this to be an ill omen, and they express anxiety about their fortune in coming battles. This is the sign of we will have fortune in battle, plus 12 orders. 
Our wise men say it's a natural occurrence, plus 100 science, or give offerings to the god um, where we lose some discontent. See what I mean about that discontent icon looking like the wisdom icon? It's just a little blue circle, but the, wis the wisdom icon looks a bit more like an owl. It's got little tiny, tiny ears on it. Um, yeah. So this is, this is the wisdom icon. It's a little purple owl's face with ears. And this is the discontent icon. Little purple sad face. And I got them confused at a, at a glance. I think we'll have the extra 12 orders. Particularly as we are just about to go to war. Um, can we just move in? Yeah, so... Um, if we move in, that just automatically declares war for us. Let's just move into the trees. I'm just trying to get a view for where their cities are. Because at the moment, I can't see anything. Definitely want to start moving in with some units. What happens if we move a unit onto a builder? Can't actually do that. Interesting. Oh, we can attack it, but we can't capture it or anything. Well, if I can, if I can attack, if I can attack your uh, workers, I will, because it stops you building stuff. I see he, he advanced forward, which is good. That's that route going on there. So let's start moving up with some of these ranged units. Do need to make sure that these onagers have a reasonable chance of staying near the front. No, you've already moved this turn. Move in with the chariots. Can we get there? Still can't see a city here. Don't know where their army is right now either. And we're a little short of orders. But I can move you in there, so let's move you up. So yeah, orders are the, orders are the big problem here. Um, free chariot. See, free chariot normally would be nice, but what's the point? Um, the, if I was if I was to use the free chariot, then I'd just have one more unit that I don't have the ability to move around. Uh, we're making decent amount of training, so let's pick the civic boost here. So we're on a new turn now. I am going to start moving forwards with some more of these units. The onagers are slow, but that's okay. Right, okay, we have found a city. So now we know where we want to be to attack. Let's start moving in with some units. We do have an onager over here. But it can't get in on this turn. We do need to leave room for the onagers, but we can start moving in with some with some of our units. And with these units, I think we'll sort of prepare. I don't know how many of the onagers we'll need. Might be able to do it with. Um, might be able to do it with one per city, and I might take the other one to the other city. This one's still way here at the back. Uh, we could buy some orders for training. But give it three orders just so that I can start moving it in this direction. It's very, very slow. Um, yeah, no orders left. So... Yeah, I'm not going to do anything with you. I'm just going to put you onto sentry mode. Yeah, can't do anything with you, so we'll skip the turn. So I'm just going to hit space just to cycle through skip. I don't have any orders left, so there's nothing I can do. And we need to build something over here. Is it worth us getting walls? HP for the city. I don't think this city's going to be attacked, but let's just start working on it. This one, this city definitely needs walls because it's the closest one to the Romans. And you know what? Let's, let's just go and do the walls all the way along. Uh, leader abilities. Some leaders have special abilities that you may use during the war. These abilities depend on the art type of your leader. Alexander is a hero leader and his special wartime ability is to launch an offensive. To execute this mission, the hero leader must be the general of a unit. 
The launch offensive mission will reduce the cooldown effect on any adjacent military unit and add one order per unit affected by the mission. This effectively means that for the cost of some training, a hero leader general can allow a group of units to have a second attack in the same turn, which can be very powerful. Other leader uh, abilities include a builder, a leader's uh, builder leader's workers may build urban tiles and stack wonders to complete improvements uh, faster and build workers quicker. An orator leader enjoys better relations with religions, may recruit mercenaries and gains plus two orders per turn in a city with a friendly family. And a tactician leader gains plus two vision around their units, plus their ranged units are hidden in friendly or neutral trees. Very nice. Okay, is that an actual ambition? It doesn't look like it is. It's just telling me that such a thing exists. Uh, but before I end the turn, I'm going to end the video because we are well over the 20-minute mark. So thanks very much for watching. Watching. Uh, I'm assuming that the last video will be the final one in this series because I'm. Uh, I should be able to take a city within one video. One would hope. Uh, so I will see you then. And until then, goodbye for now.